Hank and Al used to kind of husband and wife it. You know, Al used to beat them up pretty good, and then Hank would put his arm around them, and they'd, they'd walk off, and they'd feel a lot better about life. Hank was definitely the mom in the relationship relative to the insurance of good academics. He told me that if I was too busy in school not to worry about practice, which also was pretty important. And even I missed some games because I was studying for exams the next day. Everyone will tell you it was kind of legendary registration in the gym, like Father Kelly used to laugh about it. You know, Hank, Hank was registering <laughs> with the players. He uh, would, would meet you uh, when it came time to signing up for classes, you know, 7 o'clock in the morning, going over to the old gym and making sure your schedule was right. And most importantly, your schedule was right for what you needed to graduate. Because at the end of the day, that is what's going to carry you beyond athletics. And, and, and again, this is not something that I came up with. This is something that was passed on to me. Well, he talked to me when I was 18 years old about playing at Marquette and, and classwork and how important it was to graduate a whole person. He continued that, you know. He didn't stop. You know, the best thing Hank had to give is the most valuable thing of all, time. He was at work early, by 7.30. He was one of the last guys to leave the gym floor. Uh, but he also knew by 3.30 if you missed your 2 o'clock class. Hank wanted to talk ball. Al had no interest in talking ball. And Al had no interest in talking about uh, details. That was Hank's thing. Yeah, he knew the very basics. And, and, and that's one thing that I feel very fortunate as an athlete, that I was continually taught the basic fundamentals of the game. I remember, you know, uh, drills that we did were the drills that I learned in college, you know, how to recover during timeouts, uh, how to swipe a ball uh, with your hand closed in case you hit the guy's hand, because if you slap it with the hand open, the rough hears that, he calls a foul. If you keep your hand closed, rough can't hear that, <laughs> no foul. <laughs> so it was those little things <laughs> that they would teach you. It was a stroke of genius for Al to retain Hank, and I think Hank really enjoyed the fact that Al gave him so much responsibility and called him a co-coach and in effect he was a co-coach. One day he actually sat me down and opened up the books and at that time I had no idea that uh, we actually made money and as I was sitting there and he was going through various items in his, his log and he said well this is what we make for popcorn and peanuts and cotton candy and this is what we do when we go on the road and this is what we get for TV. And, and, and that was amazing to me because I had no clue that money was being generated by way of uh, our participation on the athletic field. So for him to allow me the opportunity to see that at an early age changed my whole vision and my whole life and, and, and what I was involved in. And then I knew then that it was important for me to uh, obtain my uh, degree from Marquette. He truly was a father figure because he didn't holler. He would just use the big D word, you know, disappointed. And we say he's disappointed, man. That hurt. <laughs> that hurt. But he said it softly, his hands on your shoulders. And everybody knew, uh-oh, <laughs> you're in trouble. If Hank's got his hands on your shoulders, <laughs> you're in trouble. You know, what I'm proudest of in my own career, I'm the only coach in the history of the game to start two academic All-Americans in the Final Four and graduate every player from a Final Four team. Uh, more than half with honors. I attribute that to Hank. Truly, these guys were old school. Like, they truly felt responsible. They would scold you, but they also would defend you. You know what I mean? Uh, and, and, and that's where you hope, you know, uh, that life, as life goes on, the next generation has people like that who truly care about you. So even though you don't mind looking sloppy, they don't want you looking sloppy. Right? Even though you might say something off the cuff, they say, watch your mouth. I mean, they're just letting you know that somebody cares about you. That he looked at you as a person beyond the athletic arena. And the things that I'm doing today in life is because of a person like him who cared so much. Some people talk it and some people walk it. And Hank, he walks it.